Hello again everybody and a very warm welcome back to the channel. Today we're back in the Headwind A330 Neo in Microsoft Flight Simulator with some big news in fact. Today we're going to be previewing and uh, showing you guys all of the new features that the Headwind team have put in to an upcoming update, a major update in fact, which will support the fly-by-wire stable build 0.8.1 and that's massive. We're going to go through a lot of the different changes and some of the features that you're going to be able to look forward to. As always, I hope you enjoy the video. Please do hit the like button down below. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Share your thoughts in the comments below. So then, here we are in the flight deck on stand at the wonderful Fly Tampa Athens scenery for MSFS. We've just got all the systems alive. We're in the process of aligning the IRS with real time. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is head over towards the EFB here. And we're going to have a little look at some of the new features here. So in the EFB then, we turn it on, go to the settings tab, head to the ATSU AOC page, and uh, you'll notice straight away that we've got Telex, we've got Simbrief username pilot ID selected, and Hoppy user ID as well. And most likely, if you're installing these from fresh now with this major update, which is always recommended, uh, these will be blank, so you need to go and insert both of those uh, relevant login codes and usernames back into these boxes to enable it. And uh, once you've got your Hoppy user ID added in for your ACAS, like in the Flabberwire A32NX as it is at the moment, you can then enable Hoppy there before pushback. Once you've done that, you can load in your Simbri flight plan into the EFB and you can go through the uh, usual sort of refueling processes and everything else that you would want to do throughout the uh, setup of your flight as well. So we'll begin the refuel process. Turning our attention to the MCDU, we can go ahead and load our flight plan in here too. Username now for this lives in the EFB like it does on the current Flabberwire A32 and X as well. You can see our IRS is aligned and uh, refueling in fact has commenced. We've now got uh, passenger boarding ambience like in the A32 and X2 which is a really nice quality of life feature. And it will board in some relative sort of real time as well. Uh, and you can sit through and work all the way through all of that. This has basically got the latest iteration of the MCDU, the A32NX now installed within it, which is really cool. And because of that, within it, you can see more complexity to the legs page and uh, you get a lot more data included now too. So you're getting a lot more accuracy within the LNAV system and you've got all your constraints too, which should work really quite nicely. Within the ATC menu and the departure request page, you can see here that now we've imported our flight plan. We wanted to get PDC clearance via the ACAS system and Hoppy. It now has the correct aircraft type added in as well. So really, really good bit of work from the headwind team. Within the progress page, it shows both uh, recommended and optimum cruise. And it calculates that better. It, it displays better values for those figures too. Maximum payload has been tweaked to 44.8 tonnes and any waypoints that you have in here that you might want to add, whether they be coordinates or otherwise, uh, it now accepts a couple of different formats by default and it's the Alpha XX, dot X and Brava Yankee Yankee dot Y formats. They've tweaked the EFB so that now if you get a direct bit of sunlight across the front of the glass, you can still read it, which is a really good bit of uh, tweaking that they've done. I know that was an issue in previous versions. And the fuel display uh, now shows the correct fuel for each tank on the aircraft. So one major tweak here is the fact that they've now split the settings and configuration pages, i.e. the detents, uh, the throttle calibrations and things like that, away from the A32NX. So they're no longer shared between the A32NX and the A339X, as they're now beginning to call it. What that means is you're going to have to go back into your calibration page and you're going to have to reset 
all of this once again. But it's uh, certainly not too much of a uh, an issue. What I always recommend if you want a nice click spot, uh, just to go through a little bit of a throttle calibration setup tutorial I guess within this uh, video today, is to set a nice 0 0.1 dead band for cruise so you have a nice uh, bit of wiggle room for the click spot. Uh, and same for flex, I'd probably recommend decimal 1.0 for that as well. Uh, and I've got the Turtle Beach Velocity 1 throttle and yoke so I've got two axis on my throttle. In fact I've got four but I'll only be using two for this aeroplane. So we can set those accordingly and then Toga right at the top doesn't really need a particularly big dead band and remember to just like save your changes as well. The refueling rate as you can see it's been taking a little while that's because they've tweaked the way that the refuel works. The aeroplane's got huge fuel tanks on board and uh, from empty it can take roughly 30 to 35 minutes to actually fill it up. So they've adjusted the refuel rate to around about 33 minutes. Within the model, master warning and master caution, these two lights and buttons here. They're now clickable again, as you can hear. And we've got some tyre landing special effects as well, smoke, rain, that sort of thing added to the aeroplane too. They've also said that they've added some under the hood improvements. Now, we're not entirely sure what they are, but there's been a lot of tweaking within the aeroplane with a lot of minor pieces of code which actually together become a significant improvement as well. As we're watching the pushback and listening to uh, engine 2 start up, they've adjusted the thrust of uh, the M1 from 20 to 40% uh, between 0 and 0 0.1 Mach, and this should therefore change the idle thrust and the way the aeroplane taxis on the ground as well, so it should improve taxi behaviour. And the fuel flow factor has also been adjusted, so your consumption of the aeroplane both engines on normal operations should now be around 5.2 tonnes of fuel per hour, around about 90 kilograms per minute. So that's a lot of features that they've updated so far. Not everything has been covered in the video of course, and we're going to check out how it handles on takeoff and go for a quick little bit of flying. One other thing that they've integrated now is uh, the fact that they've now added in Navigraph chart functionality within the EFB as well which is a really cool feature they've included and you can type in your keyboard now without worrying about affecting your click spots and things either. So then, one main difference that I've noticed so far is the fact that it actually taxis really easily on idle. However, with the version that I've got I found that the nose wheel steering is very restricted and it can actually be quite difficult to uh, turn nicely on the apron. So that's something that perhaps we can look forward to um, in the near future with maybe a tweak or an update. Or indeed by the time you're watching this it might not even be an issue. So it requires a little bit more thought when you're taxiing on the ground. For example here you're going to need to roll out of the turn early as if you're resetting that tiller almost and these are changes that will take a little bit of getting used to we're going to use the full runway today in fact our v1 speed is 141 knots here at Athens they've uh, done a lot of work trying to make this aeroplane feel a lot more like a realistic A330, make it feel heavier. One thing that it really struggled with before using a default uh, sort of autopilot system in a way in the early versions of this mod was direct twos, especially within SIDS and STARS. So what we're going to do is have a little look at how the aeroplane behaves 
with a couple of direct twos. There's flex. Eighty knots already, and I can already feel actually bizarrely the nose wheel has begun to lift up. So that's something that they really need to work on. Um, at a hundred knots, it already was trying to sort of lift the nose wheel and uh, get airborne. And for a V1 of 141, not something that I'd expect to necessarily happen. Let's get the autopilot on for a sharp left turn coming up. We'll see how it responds to this. It's actually holding our V2 plus 10 quite nicely up to our acceleration speeds. Clean the aeroplane up, and away we go. So we've got a couple of uh, different legs here. We're going to go and do a direct to Kea within the SID. And again, that responds quite nicely. Now we're going to do a direct to KRO. And again, that responds really nicely. So, some tweaks aside to the way it behaves on the ground during taxi, particularly uh, tricky with left and right turns. And indeed, similar behaviour when you're trying to maintain that centre line on the runway and a little bit of a crosswind. That plus the fact that it wants to try and take off at 100 knots still. They're pretty much the only things now that I would really like the headwind team to focus on improving. It's fantastic that it's now got ACARS, it's got Navigraph integration, with uh, Navigraph charts and a whole host of other incredible functionalities and systems that we've enjoyed for a little while now in the very latest versions of the Fly-by-Wire A32 and X. All for free, which is quite remarkable. If you do want to download it for yourself, then all you need to do is check the links in the description down below and you guys will be able to see a link taking you straight to the flightsim.to page so you can get your hands on this wonderful aeroplane. And with these sort of major updates, when it does release, of course, you'll need to make sure you go and clear all of the uh, previous files of this version of the aeroplane before installing the new functionality, the new version. Be sure to join the Headwing Discord as well, I'll put the link to that in the description. Make sure you click like and subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care.